good to give thanks to the Lord Hallelujah. and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, yes, to declare your loving kindness in the morning yes, and your faithfulness at night. Yes, on an instrument of ten strings, on the harp, the word says, with harmonious sound. Why? For you, Lord, have made me glad through your word. And I know, I know that I will triumph in the works of your almighty King. To God be the glory. Victory is mine. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, we come before you once again another day, praising you and thanking you, Lord God, for your presence in our lives, Lord God. So as we cast every weight aside this morning, we invite your presence into this corporate worship, Lord God, into those sacred places in our hearts where you reside. And we invite you to just shower down your Holy Spirit upon us, that you would have your will and way in everything that's said and done during this worship experience. And we praise you and we thank you in advance. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ, amen, amen, and amen. 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 Today's scripture lesson can be found in 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. And the word of the Lord says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. May the Lord add a blessing to his already blessed word.
more love to thee, O Christ, more love to thee. Hear thou the prayer I pray while on bended knee. For this is my earnest plea, more love to be, O Christ, more love to thee. Father God, in the precious name of your Son, Jesus, as we assemble again together in your presence, Lord, while we thank you, Lord God, for all of your grace, your mercy, and your goodness, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. And Lord, we know that without you, we can do nothing. But with you, all things are possible. So Lord, we just want to praise for a moment. And we just want to worship you. We want to lift our voices up and thank you for there is no greater love than the love you have for us, your children. No greater love, Lord God, than when you gave your life a ransom for us, God. So, Lord, we just want to take a moment if you will allow us just to say thank you, Lord, for your love. To say thank you, Lord God, that we can draw near unto you in that love this morning, God. We will always praise you, always lift your name on high. But Lord, right now, just for a moment, let us be still. Let us just draw near unto you, Lord God. And we just want to worship you. We just want to lift our hands in the sanctuary. Lift our voices and sing praises to your name, oh God. And God, sometimes we just come, we don't want to ask for anything. Because you have proven yourself over and over and over in the lives of your people. So we just want to pass in your glory. We just want to say more love to you, Lord. More love to you, So God, I just lift your name on high today. And I just thank you for the journey that you brought me through, Lord God. It wasn't easy. Yes, Lord, we had to cry sometimes in the midnight hour. But we thank you this morning, Lord, that in the midst of all of those tears, you were there, right there by our side. So, Lord, you see why we say more love to you this morning. Yes, Lord, it was hard, disappointing, huh? hurtful, but God, I thank you that the songwriter said through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to depend upon his word. So God, we just say thank you this morning, not asking for anything, but just to say thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord God, just to bow at your feet and worship you for a while. Woo. Glory to God. Lord, we just say thank you. We thank you for this holy place of worship. Lord God, that we can come here. So that the foot of the cross be still and feel your presence all around us. So Lord God, you took us all from the shepherd, Lord God, to the door. 
Show yourself mighty. Show yourself mighty. Dear Lord God, you do a new thing in this body, Lord God. I know you are. You're doing it already. So Lord, we close this prayer as we start. More love to thee, O oh Lord. More love to thee. So Lord, you hear now the prayer we pray while on bended knees. Simply, Lord God, more love to thee, O oh More love to thee. Thank you, Lord God, for we ask it in your name. Amen. Good morning, my brothers and my sisters. God bless you and thank you for joining us on this first Sunday in January. We are in New York, Yonkers, New York, where there is a winter weather advisory. And so we thought it best to just make sure that everyone was safe and we wanna take advantage of the opportunity that we have with our virtual worship so we are worshiping virtually today, not in the sanctuary. But that doesn't mean that we are not still worshiping. My prayer is that you got a whole worship set up in your home right now, and that you're focusing right now on praising God and on being indwelt by the Spirit of God. We wanted to make sure that you were aware of a couple of things that are coming up this week. Uh, we have our quarterly conference for those who are amenable to the quarterly conference institutional will be having our quarterly conference on thursday on thursday january 11th at 6 p.m it will be a conference call quarterly conference so we'll be using the number for the prayer line you'll get further information further email just confirming that for you we also want to let you know that next sunday january 14th Institutional Church will be celebrating our Christian Education Day. We'll be lifting up Christian education in the life of the church. And our guest preacher on that day will be Reverend Tiffany Morrison from the St. Charles Amy Zion Church in Spark Hill, New York. We are praising God for our Christian Education Department and praising God for what he will do through Reverend Morrison next week. And we don't want to forget about Holy Communion. We do celebrate Holy Communion every month. And so because we were not able to gather today in the sanctuary, and because next week is the Christian Education Day, we'll celebrate Holy Communion on the third Sunday of this month. January 21st is when we'll celebrate Holy Communion. And Jesus says, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. He didn't say you got to do it on first Sunday. He said do it as often as you can. And so we'll be doing it on third Sunday. All right, so let us now get right back to worship.
thank you choir, thank you Brother Gibbs for that selection. That was the perfect song for us to start off this new year. So let's go right to the scripture for this first Sunday of 2024. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 23 and 24. And the word of the Lord says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. On this first Sunday of the year, I'd like to use as a sermon topic, He will do it. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for getting us through 2023. And we are praising you and thanking you for what you will yet do in 2024. We thank you for your presence always in our lives. You guide us, you protect us, you nurture us, and of course, Lord, you teach us. So we ask, dear Lord, that you would open up our hearts, our minds, our souls to receive what you have for us today. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Happy New Year. By now, you've heard this a hundred times from friends and family members, from store clerks and neighbors, from newscasters and television personalities, 2024 is here. And with the new year come pronouncements of how things are gonna be different, better, improved. All the world talks about resolutions. What are you gonna to resolve to do this year? Lose weight, exercise more, save money, buy a house or a car, get a new job, go back to school. On January 1st, people all around the world resolve that they're gonna have their best year ever. And unfortunately, people in my profession aid in the sense of expectancy. You hear preachers say things like, this is the year of your breakthrough. Or, or they'll say, this is the year of prosperity in your life. <laughs> or this is the year to get your thing from God. <laughs> and a few years ago, I heard this phrase, happy new you. <laughs> and then I heard even another one. Instead of happy new year, they say, happy you year. <laughs> I guess that means that this year is all about you. Funny how, how they always say that this is the year that you're going to get whatever that thing is. For once, I'd like to hear a preacher say, this ain't going to be your year. Actually, for you, this year is going to be miserable. <laughs> but we still proclaim the newness of the year, and we receive that we're going to be better and that we're going to do better. But with most pronouncements of newness in the new year, the resolutions are soon forgotten. The prophetic predictions of divine prosperity are soon disremembered. And the new you quickly relapses into the old you. I'm willing to admit that, that I went into previous years with high hopes of changing my life. And then when the end of the year comes, I'm no different than how the year started. There's nothing new. How about you? What's new? What's different about you on this today, January 7th, that was, that was different than you were seven days ago on December 31st? Or do you have the same job, the same car, the same house, the same friends, the same clothes, and the same routine? Nothing is new. But maybe we've got it all wrong. You see, we keep talking about what we're going to do, what we're going to accomplish, what we're going to do better or, or do more of or do differently. But instead, 
we need to look to the one who is before all things and in all things and above all things. We need to look to the one who's the king of glory, strong and mighty in battle. We need to look to the one who formed you in your mother's womb and knows the number of hairs on your head. We need to look to the one who is faithful and just who forgives our sins and cleanses from all unrighteousness. We need to look to the one whose love and grace and mercy is everlasting. We need to look to the one who doesn't need a New Year's, New Year's resolution because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I may be late, but God is always on time. I may be broke, but God is rich with houses and lands. I may be inadequate, but God is all I'll ever need. I may hold grudges, but God is merciful and forgiving. I may tell tall tales, but God is not a man that he should lie. I may be confused, but there's nothing that God doesn't know. I may try to boast on myself, but only God is worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Why are we talking about what we are going to do this year? Because we can't rely on our own strength. We can't rely on our own power. We can't rely on our own understanding. We can't rely on our own resources. We can't rely on our own abilities. This is not happy you year. This is happy God year. And I'm happy that I can hold on to God's unchanging hand. I'm happy that the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm happy that I can boldly approach the throne of God in prayer. I'm happy that God has plans to prosper me and not to harm me. I'm happy that God gave his only begotten son to die for my sins. I'm I'm happy that I'm redeemed, I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm set free. I'm happy that in my last year and in this year and even next year that God will always be in my life. Happy God year. Hmm. So as we take these first few steps into 2024, my prayer for us is the same that Paul prayed for that church in Thessalonica. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. You know, I read this letter and, and specifically the blessings that are found in verse 23 and 24 are extra special. It's because 1 Thessalonians is considered to be the very first letter that Paul wrote. He wrote it around the year 50 AD, almost less than, less than 20 years after the death of Jesus Christ and after 20 years of Paul doing ministry. You see, Paul had seen a lot. Paul had done a lot. Paul had experienced a lot. But one thing he knew better than anything else is that nothing good happens unless God is a part of it. Paul knew that there was nothing too hard for God. Paul knew that God was able. Paul knew that God did it before and God would do it again. Paul knew that God was good all the time and all the time God was good. Paul knew that all he ever needed, God's hands had provided. Paul knew that yes, God was real for Paul could feel him in his soul. So Paul begins by praying that God himself would give them the ability and the power and the fortitude to be all that God had destined them to be, all that God destines us to be. Here is the truth. Only God can make you better. Think about for a moment. Yeah, exercise will improve your body. Therapy may help your mind. Friends may lift your spirits. Good fortune may improve your circumstances, but only God can make you better. And what God alone can do is to sanctify you through and through. 
Sanctification. Sanctification is the process of becoming like Jesus. It's everything that God does in our lives to make sure that we turn out like Jesus. God has invested in us the death of his only begotten son. You see, sanctification is the divine guarantee that God's investment will not be wasted. It's the assurance that God finishes what he starts. Sanctification, then, is God's commitment to us. We're going to make it. God will personally see to that. And that phrase that says through and through, that, that translates a Greek word that, that combines whole and in the end. God has ordained that his children, all of them without exception, will be made whole in the end. <laughs> We're not that way now. <laughs> Most of us feel fragmented and torn in a thousand directions. We're incomplete. Be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. We're Christians under construction in this life. <laughs> but God intends that when we finally get to heaven, the hammers and the saws will be put away and we'll all stand before the Lord with every part perfectly in place and every aspect of our lives made perfect. <laughs> and when God says that you will be complete, he's talking about your whole spirit, your whole soul, your whole body. And that phrase tells us the extent of our sanctification. Paul wants us to know that God intends to renovate the whole person in all of its parts. Nothing will be left out or overlooked. Every part will be made perfect in the end. Suppose you could change something about yourself. What would you start? Lots of us would start on the outside. Would you make yourself skinnier, taller, better looking? Would you change your eyes, your hair, <laughs> that bulge that you got going on there? <laughs> but as hard as it is to change on the outside, it's infinitely harder to change on the inside. If there's anything we know about human nature, it's that people change slowly if they change at all. Think about the struggles of your own life. What would you change about yourself on the inside if you could? Would it be an impatient spirit, a critical tongue, a spirit of discontentment, a judgmental spirit, a disorganized life? How, how hard has it been when you've tried to change those things about yourself? Or perhaps you didn't even know that there were things about you that you needed to change. And that's the problem with New Year's resolutions and phrases like Happy New You and Happy You Year. That way of thinking puts us in the driver's seat. It makes us the initiator and the implementator of change. And when we're the ones driving change, we want to change superficial things like our outer appearance, or, or we struggle to change the internal things that have been cursing us for so long, or, or, or we're so caught up in ourselves that we don't even know that we need to change. But God knows exactly what needs to be changed about us. You see, God doesn't care about your hairstyle or the way that you dress or your weight. God doesn't look at our appearances or our physical stature. God does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outer appearance, but God looks at the heart. So we need to let God work on us. We need to let God take control. Let God work on your heart. Yield to the Holy Spirit. God can show you how to love more. God can restore your joy. God can calm the storms and give you peace. God can increase your patience for others. God can grow your ability to show kindness. God can empower you to abound in goodness. God can soften your tongue from harshness to gentleness. God can give you that mustard seed of faithfulness 
faithfulness, God can allow you to have yourself to have self-control over every curse and burden you've been a victim to. We can't do it, but God can do it. He will do it. And he'll do it in such a way that we'll be completely blameless at the blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word blameless means to be acquitted in a court of law. You are blameless if no one can bring a charge against you. God intends that when we stand before him, that he will say, does anyone in this whole universe know any reason why this person should not enter, should not enter heaven? And at that point, there's going to be nothing but silence. Because no one, not the angels, not the demons, not the saints or the sinners, no one in the all the universe will be able to bring any charge against God's people. Jesus paid it all. And, and listen, that's not true of us now. Those who know us best, they know our weaknesses, and they could testify against us, but, but, but they're kind enough not to throw all, all our shortcomings in our face. And, and spiritual growth can be discouraging at times. We seem to take slow progress. It's like climbing, climbing Mount Everest. The closer you get to the top, the further away it seems. But God has a reason for all of us. You see, God wants us to depend on him for everything. God designed life so that it only works when he is in charge of everything. When we try to run the show, which we often do, that's when things fall apart. If, if this Christian life is left up to us, listen, we will fail every time. But only God can give us what we need to be victorious. You see, today, today, on January 7th, we don't feel blameless because we're not blameless. In, in fact, we are blameworthy, and we make things worse by, what, worse by what we do and we say. But today, we're unfinished people. But when God is finally finished with us, we will stand blameless in his presence. Oh, I can't wait for that day. Despite everything that we've done to deserve eternal punishment, God will wipe our slate clean. Only God, the one who calls you, is faithful, and he will do it. Mm. That little phrase is so important. Our entire hope, both in this life and in the life to come, rests on the faithfulness of God. His faithfulness bears the weight, the entire weight of our little efforts. Think of those four words at the end of verse 24. He will do it. They're simple, but they're direct. No qualification, no hesitation, no doubt of any kind, just four words, he will do it. Not he may do it. Not he might do it. Not well, he could do it. Not he do, he'll do it only if he feels like it. Not even he will do it if we do our part. Just a simple declarative statement that God will do it. Why are you trying to do things on your own? God will do it. Why are you worrying about, about how you're going to make it to tomorrow? He will do it. Why are you stressing about things that you cannot change? He will do it. Why are you doubtful about how your situation will turn out? He will do it. Why do you think that you can't accomplish with the tax the task before you, he will 
do it. He will heal you. He will provide for you. He will strengthen you. He will comfort you. He will change you. He will forgive you. He will sanctify you. He will save you. He will do it. Whatever it is that you're hoping and praying that you're faithful for in 24, he will do it. Whatever needs that you have, whatever illness you need healed, whatever stresses that you're going through, he will do it. When you're in your darkest hour, when your mind is racked by worry and, and, and pain, he will do it. You've got to stand up. You've got to look at your situation. You've got to look at your troubles. You've got to look at this next year. And whatever it is, you've got to know with faith that he will do it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, we are believing in God that God will do it. Whatever it is, we know that God will do it. And one of the things that we are assured that God will do is that God will give you eternal life if you confess that you believe Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. There are a lot of religions in this world, and I'm not knocking any other religion, but here's one thing I know about Christianity. That Christianity is the only religion where God has does it, God has done it all for you. Jesus Christ was born into this world, the Son of God. He lived a sin-free life. He was crucified on the cross, yet he rose again. And because he lives, we have eternal life. God did thing that we couldn't do for ourselves. God has saved you. And all God says is, in order for you to receive this gift of salvation, you just have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you will be saved. What better time, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what better time than on this first Sunday of 2024 for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And it's simple. All you have to do is just to say a simple prayer, just you know, something like this. Just say, Lord, I realize now that I need you. Lord, I've been trying to do this all by myself, but I couldn't do it. I need you to do it for me. So, so just pray, Lord, come into my heart. Come into my life. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe he died for me. I believe he was raised from the dead. And I believe that he will walk right beside me as I continue to live my life. Just pray that, that God would send the Holy Spirit to just come into your heart and give you the strength that you need to make it day by day. And if you just pray any simple prayer like that, you are saved. Let us all pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for this new year, 2020. We thank you, Lord, for those who are giving their lives to Christ for the first time from the watching of this video. And we pray, dear Lord, for those who are your children, who have been your children, and who are ple pledging and proclaiming today that we are not going to try to do this thing by ourselves, but we're going to recognize that whatever it is, Lord, that you will do it. And so we're asking, dear Lord, to, to don't leave us, don't forsake us. Continue walking behind, beside us, just as you did in 2023. We're trusting you. We believe in you. We have faith in you to do even more in 2024. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for your presence in our lives. And we thank you for what you are yet going to do. We know that you can do it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, 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 my brothers and sisters. And you've heard the preacher say that 
2024 is a year where we want more, right? We want more, or God is going to give us more. God has more for us in 2024. And again, I like that. I like the way that sounds, but we're making it about us when we say we want more in 2024. How about we pledge that 2024 is going to be a year where we give more. Give more love. Give more kindness. And of course, give more of ourselves to God. And we love it. And your method of giving more to God, that one of the things you desire to do is to be a blessing to God with your tithes and your offerings. It'd be wonderful. We'd really appreciate it if you would give to this ministry here. If that's your desire, you can go to our website, www.inchurch.org. Once you're there, just hit that donate button. And you can give by PayPal, by Tidely, and by Zelle. And if you don't want to do the online giving, that's okay. You can write us a check or a money order made payable to Institutional AME Zion Church. And then you can just mail it to us. Our address is on the website. It's 42 Bishop William J. Walls Place, Yonkers, New York, 10701. But in whatever way you give, whether online or whether you give by check or money order, however much you give, whether it's the widow's mite or it's thousands of dollars, we want to say thank you. We want to know that we're praying that God will bless you, that God seriously will give you more, more love, joy, peace, more patience, kindness, goodness, more gentleness, more faithfulness, more self-control, that God will give you more of all the fruit of the Spirit in 2024. Thank you, and God bless you. This brings us to the end of our worship service, but not to the end of our worship, because we left 2023 praising, and we're going into 2024 praising as well, knowing that whatever it is we need, whatever it is that we need God to do for us, He will do it. Now unto Him, who is able to keep us from falling and present us blameless in his presence with exceeding great joy. To God our Father, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now, henceforth, and forevermore.